So recently we did a video on how much sense does a $100 smartphone make in 2019. And if you have not checked that video out yet, you can find it from somewhere here. And this is kind of an opportune moment to review the Lenovo A5s because well at a $100 price tag, this is an entry level device. And this phone was launched very recently. So what does the Lenovo A5s bring to the table? And does it make sense getting a phone of this kind in 2019? Let's find out. In terms of design, the Lenovo A5s looks like a typical budget phone of today with bezels and a chin. It has a plastic body with a glossy finish that makes it look good actually. It does not look like a budget phone at first glance. The only way you know this is a budget phone is that the size is small to be compared with higher end devices. Plus there is the weight to consider. The phone is very light on the hands and since it is small in size, it is comfortable to hold as well. The glossy back will attract some fingerprints and smudges but at this point, there is nothing new in any kind of phones. The frame is metal so I guess it can handle small drops and impacts. The back is removable and you can access the removable battery, dual SIM and a memory card. Overall, the design is appealing considering this is a budget phone. The display here is a 5.45 inches IPS LCD panel with HD plus resolution and an 18 is to 9 aspect ratio. There are considerable bezels all around the device that does not make the phone look unappealing. The HD plus resolution on a display this size looks good enough. There are no visible pixelations. The viewing angles look good too. Colors are not as punchy, neither do they stand out but there is not much you can complain about this. It is bright enough to use under sunlight and harsh lighting and there is a presence of adaptive brightness feature as well. So overall, this is an okay display. Right, now the performance is the part that can make or break a budget phone. And this one here packs a modest quad-core Helio A22 chipset paired with 2GB of RAM. The performance from this one is as expected. Day-to-day -day tasks can run okay, but apps like Messenger, Instagram, and YouTube can take a while to open up. Multitasking is not very good and switching between apps is not seamless. While multiple tabs in your Messenger, you can notice the slugginess. In addition, it cannot keep the apps open in the background for very long. As for games, you cannot play high-end games that very well. You won't be able to play Asphalt as it's not even available in the Play Store for this phone. However, PUBG is playable in lowest settings and with very minimal amount of lags and stutters. Normal low-end games can run okay though. The phone runs on the latest Android Pie and so the user experience is pretty smooth. I feel like the less RAM is the bottleneck for the device to perform as smooth as it can. As for the storage, there is only 16 GB on board, but since there is a microSD card slot to expand the memory, that's all well. Onto the camera front, it has single cameras of 13 megapixel both at the front and at the back. And as far as the images go, they are what you would expect from a phone of this caliber. Most of the aspects on this one are good enough, but the colors appear a bit washed out. The color accuracy is there, but it's not as punchy as I'd like it to be. The amount of details in the photos are acceptable and definitely social media worthy. But don't expect anything super high quality though. Let's just say it packs enough details for you to take photos of your college notes and send it. The autofocus takes a slight amount of time to get the subject in focus, but besides that, it works alright. HDR mode does a good job too. As good as you can expect from a phone in this price range. In HDR, colors tend to be slightly punchier than the normal ones. However, there does not seem to be other features in the cameras. Maybe because ours was a review unit that we got prior to the launch so it only has a normal mode. Because if not, the mode selection option is just pointless. For nighttime images, you can't expect very much either. The images will come out grainy and won't pack enough details. But this is actually somewhat better than I expected it to be. The selfie camera has the same story. It clicks social media worthy pictures but nothing that you can brag about. You might be able to see good amount of details when the subject is up close but the same can't be said for every situation. Like I said, there is no portrait mode, not even a software based one so no bokeh pictures for you. Video quality seems okay. Not something that you can vlog or such but just good enough to capture some moments for you to watch later. And definitely post it in your social media. Now moving on to our final aspect, the battery. 
Here you get a 3100 mAh battery which is typical for a phone at this price range. Due to a power efficient chipset and low race display, this one will last you for an entire day on day to day usage. There is no fast charging of any kind and that cannot be expected either. This phone takes around 2 hours to get fully charged from an empty battery. So bottom line for a $100 price tag, this phone seems like a decent value. There are very few options in this price range and the options we have revolve around Android Go and we already know that Android Go has its own limitations but with this one you get a full-fledged Android experience which won't be very disappointing. Of course you will have to cut some corners but the price you pay for it is good enough. Having said that, if you add a few bucks, there are other options available out there like the Samsung Galaxy M10, the Realme C1 and the Redmi 6 which are literally better in every aspect. So that was our review of the Lenovo A5s. Tell us what you think about the device in the comment section below. Till then, I am Pratima Adhikari and thank you for watching.